fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to the Fast Pitch TV Show. I'm your host, Gary Leela. Now, if you found our show on Facebook, your Apple TV, or any other video sharing device, please check out my website at fastpitch.tv. It's the home of the Fast Pitch TV network and a place to find all of my softball video channels and softball blogs. At this time, I believe there's seven video channels and 11 blogs on the website, and all of these blogs, video channels, everything is dedicated to one thing and one thing only, and that's fast pitch softball. Now last week, Megan Willis, the former University of Texas great and current MPF USSSA pride catcher, sent me a message on Facebook telling me she just finished creating five videos with the skills companies for softball catchers and asked me if I wanted to see them. Well, of course I said yes. After seeing them, I asked her and the skills company if it was okay to bring you these videos, and they said yes. I really appreciate it, guys. Now, I want to thank the skills company for letting me show you these videos, and I'll bring them to you right after this word from my sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham, you just put a cool $30 in your pocket. One of the hardest pitches to catch in softball is the drop ball. And I have had the privilege to catch one of the best pitchers in the country, Cat Osterman, who has a nasty drop ball. And in order for me to catch that and get that into a strike, it was how low could I start? So that's a secret right there. How low can you get your body? Almost, you want your bottom to the ground. You want to get your elbow nice and low so that when you are ready for it, you're anticipating that ball to get lower. You can lead your heel of your palm towards the ball so that that way you're catching underneath it. You can push it up into the strike zone and hold it there so they can see it. What that also helps if you don't get that pesky thumb jam, or we call it catcher's thumb. And that way, what happens is that thumb twists under the ball and that ball just constantly jams it and jams it. So what you wanna think, again, palm towards the ball so you can push it into the strike zone. And now we can get that drop called a strike. Let's talk receiving. There's a few simple rules I want you to think about when catching the ball and making sure we're receiving it and making it look like it's a strike to the umpire. When going out and receiving the pitch, number one, I want you to think about catching the ball so that the ball is facing home plate. No matter which direction, if it's coming on the inside, you're going to catch it, ball towards home. You're going to go to the outside, you're going to go and catch the ball, ball towards home. Second, I want you guys to think about getting your nose and your shoulders behind the pitch. So if that ball takes you a little bit further to the inside or to the left, not only are you gonna get your hand out there, but now you're gonna shift your shoulders and nose behind it. That way, it's starting to deceive the umpire a little bit. So he thinks that's the same place you just caught the pitch before, even though it's that much further outside. Lastly, I want you guys to think about catching it with an arm bar. And what that means is a straight arm, even a straight wrist. We don't want any bend in our wrist because that means we're gonna start moving the ball around. And when an umpire sees the ball moving or glove moving, he's gonna think you're framing the pitch. So the straighter and more quiet you are, the better chance you're gonna get for that inside pitch to be called a strike. When people come to me asking about blocking, the first thing I want to tell them is anticipation. You want to anticipate that ball hitting the dirt so that you're never surprised when it actually does. So if you're the catcher and you're calling in the pitches, let's say you just called in a drop ball, there's a good chance it's gonna hit the dirt. In that case, you're ready to block the ball. Another way we anticipate is when runners are on. If we're always blocking the ball when runners aren't on, then we're never gonna be surprised when the ball hits the dirt and a runner's on. That way we can block the ball properly, get up and throw her out. So always think anticipation, never be surprised. My favorite part about catching, 
plays at the plate. I have a few easy steps for you guys to remember so you're not called for obstruction, but so you're in the best position to hopefully block that whole plate. Number one, you start in front of home plate. A good rule of thumb is about a foot in front of it, so it gives you some leeway. That way, if the runner does move you, you're still in front of home plate that she hasn't moved you on top or behind home plate and she can reach it. Second, you want your right foot to be in line with the top left corner of home plate. That way, when the ball starts coming in, you can drop step with your left foot, which now you're in front of home plate. Then you're going to drop your right leg down to the ground so that you have full coverage of home plate. Lastly, you want to make sure your hand, your throwing hand and ball, is inside the glove and the back of your glove is facing the runner so that when you go to put that tag on, the runner is sliding into the back of your glove and not into your hand and ball so the ball won't come out. So remember, back of glove towards runner, knee down, and you're blocking the entire plate. In a perfect world, we would love for that ball to bounce right in front of us. But in reality, that ball's always gonna take that pesky bounce to our left or to our right. So we're gonna talk about how to get your body around that ball so that when it hits you, we can block it properly. First things first, remember those five steps we already talked about. Number one was getting our glove to the ball. So that's what I still want you to do. Your glove's gonna follow the ball, which then your body's gonna follow it and you're gonna get around it. What I want you guys to remember is for your feet, it's gonna follow kind of like a half moon or a smiley face. That way, when you take a step, it's in an angle and your body is facing towards home plate. So your head, shoulders, knees are all facing towards home plate. Because if you are open, there's a good chance that ball's gonna hit you and it's gonna go in the opposite direction of the plate. So what we wanna do is stop that from happening get our body around the ball so that we're facing home, the ball's gonna hit us, and then fall towards home plate. Have you heard about the great softball coaches clinic that Fast Pitch TV is hosting? They have a great lineup of speakers, including softball pitching great Kat Osterman. See all the speakers at www.fastpitch.tv slash clinic. I'm sure this clinic's gonna sell out quick, so get your ticket today. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed Megan's videos. If you want to see more about Megan, go to her website, MeganWillisSoftball.com. Now, if you have an iPhone, an iPad, you need to look at the apps we've created for those devices. At this time, I think we've created eight different apps for the iPhone and iPad. Just go to app.fastpitch.tv. Don't forget to check out our new skills video channel at coacheslook.com. It's a great way for high school players to get noticed by college coaches. Trying to get something new going here, so check it out. Well, that's it for today. So until next week, this is Gary Lee saying thanks for watching. This show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV Network.